Hey Stitch Cutie, it's Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and this is the video tutorial for trimming your August Summertime Sally U-Troop block and then sewing on your borders. So let's get started. First off, whether you did machine applique or machine embroidery, you should have your block stitched and you removed your stabilizer from the back. So just give it a nice little press without any starch. You don't want to use starch now because it'll distort. Just make sure that your little guy isn't wrinkled or your lady I should say. I'm going to set my border pieces aside and I'm going to move my steady Betty and my fusing mat out of the way. And what we're going to do is trim our block. So I like to use my placement guide to tell me where to trim. You can also um, use your ruler and measure out the size it says in the pattern. So what I'm going to do is just make sure I have this guy totally in place right here. Let's see, is that looking good? And then I just lift up, do a little check. Perfect, okay. So what I'm gonna do is take my ruler and I'm gonna line it up right on my lines. And sorry, I am gonna get my, <laughs> my hair is gonna show because I wanna make sure that I have this totally where it belongs. And what I'm gonna do is take my pen. You can use a friction pen or a Pigma pen and I'm gonna give it a little trace. I think I'm gonna to switch to my friction pen because I think my Figma pen might be out of ink. There we go, now I can see my line. So I'm just doing a nice line here. I'm gonna do the same thing and you're using the outer trim line included in your pattern. And so what I'm doing is just making sure I stay nice and straight. And so you can use your ruler to line up on three sides so that when you trace your line, you know 100% you're accurate. There we go. Now I just need to do the top and bottom. So let's just put this, and again, sorry, I know my hair is coming into view, but that's just where I needed to be to see. So sorry, y'all. And I know um, some of y'all that we've talked to on the phone, you've noticed I'm getting a few gray hairs and it's happening. Let me just tell you, this past Friday when I got my hair cut, I had to dye my eyebrows because I'm getting gray hair in my eyebrows, y'all. Mom made fun of me for doing it because we always get our hair cut together because it's fun. And she thought I was crazy. What can I say? Okay, oh my gosh, y'all are getting just straight, straight shot of my hair. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but see, I can tell that I'm perfectly straight. See, my lines right here are perfect. My lines right here are perfect. And therefore, this line on the side is also perfect. Once I have this drawn, look at that. Now all I have to do is take my ruler, my rotary cutter, and cut this. Because I don't want to cut my pattern. I want to keep this, right? And I'm sure you do too, so you can make another one if you want to. So just get your um, cutting mat back on place. Just grab that. I love this cutting mat because it's the perfect size of my glass. It comes with the um, light pad too, by the way, but see, it's got a little bit of a like grip on the bottom. So once I have it in place, just kind of push down and look, then it's not gonna wiggle. Cause when you're dealing with something with like a rotary blade, you wanna make sure it's really secure. And I don't need my light pad. There we go. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm lined up. And trim. And then we're just gonna do that same thing on all four sides. And your block is um, nine and a half inches. So see, take a look. If you wanna measure before you cut, see I have a perfect nine and a half inch. And that's because my placement guide is perfect. There we go. Because when we go to sew our borders on, it will matter. <laughs> you will wanna make sure that your block that you're starting with is square, right? Because if it's not, you'll have an issue. But as they say in quilting, you can always quilt it out, right? <laughs> not all the time, but most of the time you can. And then we have one more cut. Oh my goodness. I love trimming the blocks because they really just look just so adorable. I love it. And then a trim right here. There we go. All right. So now let me get my trash out of the way. Let's talk about our borders. So what I need now is my steady buddy because remember how I talked about you want to be consistent with your starching throughout. I haven't starched my borders yet. So what I'm going to do is lay all four of them out 
and I'm gonna give them a press. So let me do that. Pause the camera and we'll be right back with these nice and pressed. And then we're gonna talk about how we trim these, okay? Okay, so now that you have all four of your borders nice and pressed, you're gonna set two large ones aside. And what I did is stacked my two shorter ones. And what we're gonna do is cut them to size. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the length and then I'm gonna turn it and do the width. So I know that this needs to be nine and a half inches. So I'm gonna go past my one and I'm gonna cut on the 10 and a half, right? Cause one from 10 and a half is nine and a half. So just make sure you're lined up nicely. And then come down here to the one and we'll do a cut. Now I'm gonna keep these totally together and I'm just gonna go past the four smidge and I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and straight. See how it lines up perfectly with two lines at the one line at the top and bottom. Now we're gonna do our one and a half. So I'm just gonna trim a smidge off right here. And since I'm on the four, I'm gonna go over to my five and a half. So remember that equals one and a half. One and a half plus four is five and a half. Doot, doot, doot. There we go. And do a cut. So see, you have way more fabric than you need. So this, you can keep them. You never know what applique you're gonna get out of that. So now we have our top and bottom borders perfectly trimmed. So let's repeat that same process for the remaining two borders, except now we're gonna go to 11 and a half inches in length. So I'm just gonna make sure that my piece is past my one and past my 12 and a half because one plus 11 and a half equals 12 and a half. I always start in, or not always, but right now I'm starting in just cause I don't wanna have to like look silly when I'm cutting on the camera for you. So I'm giving myself a little bit of space on my mat. So again, 11 and a half is the length I want. So 11 and a half plus one would be my 12 and a half. There we go. So set those aside. Now, same thing, we're gonna keep these two pieces together. I'm gonna line them up. It's the perfect length of my um, mat. So I'll know that it's perfectly straight up here and perfectly straight down here. And what we're gonna do is that same thing to get the one and a half. I'm gonna cut on the four and the five and a half. So four right here. And always use the other lines on your ruler. That's what they're there for. There we go. And now let's go over one and a half. Get that out of the way. So one and a half. Boop. Perfect. See, so I can see that I'm at my five and a half down here. You can also use your ruler to know you're perfectly one and a half. There we go. And again, way more fabric than you need. Set that aside. So now what we're gonna do is start sewing. When I do that, I like to get my steady bedy back out. So I just keep my whole setup like right beside me. I just put it on the table beside me, super handy. So let's talk about the steps we're gonna take. So you can use your written instructions or just look at the picture and know which piece goes where. So what we're gonna do first is sew our top and bottom on. So what I'm gonna do is just flip it right sides together. You'll line it up nicely on the edge and we're gonna do a quarter inch seam across the top and the bottom and I'll be back to show you how we'll press that. Okay, so now that you have the top and bottom seam sewed, what you're gonna do is set your seam and then just gently finger press. Oh my gosh, so cute. I love this color, it's an apricot. And then you're gonna sew that seam allowance towards your border. And mine's sewed with black thread right now simply because mom is sewing a sample and she's doing machine applique and I just handed it to her real fast and she just sewed the little border for me. So don't judge that I'm using not the right thread. Might not have been able to tell, but I knew. Okay, and so now it's time to do our left and right borders. And again, I press my seam towards the border down here. So now what you're gonna do is take your purple on the left, flop it over, your navy on the right, flop it over, do your quarter inch seams here, and then we'll be back to open that up and look at our final block. So now you've sewn the seams on the left and right. What you're gonna do is the same thing. Set your seam and then 
you're just gonna, I like to turn it this way, just gonna press it with your fingers and then with your iron. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so cute. And now, one final border. Again, set your seam, finger press it open, and voila. Let's take a look at our finished block and how cute Summertime Sally is. That makes me just happy as can be. So again, this was your August block. I hope you're looking forward to September. And as always, thanks for being a member of the YouTube Club. Happy stitching.